swear this guitar was in tune a second ago. I swear. I'm not making that up. Whew. It's 6.07 here in the desert. 36 degrees. And it's a beautiful morning. And it's nice to be here with y'all. Look at even some of you are joining me. <laughs> we ought to have pictures, one that haunts our dreams. Paint our painting colors bright. Solitude love down below them. It's just you, me, and the birds out here right now in the desert. It's pretty beautiful. Coffee. Not whiskey. But coffee. Um, I have a problem with coffee. I'm the coffee maker in our family. And I want to be a good coffee maker. 
I want to take pride in giving the sweet love of my life every morning a delicious cup of coffee that I have brewed for her. Yet, and I don't know why this is, I can't seem to bring myself to have the patience to measure. <laughs> Both the water and the grounds. I don't know why that is. I feel like, I feel like every time I get ready to make the coffee could be very conscientious about measuring everything and slowly over time collect data so I have the perfect balance of water and coffee which I feel most coffee brewers do but I find it much more enjoyable to think about the coffee as a blank canvas and splatter some paint on and see how it ends up tasting <laughs> uh, which ultimately un and unfortunately makes me a bad coffee maker. But um, it is warm. And I don't think I did too bad a job uh, today, which is good. I will not be embarrassed to serve a cup to Allie when I come back in. Um, for those of you, this is really, I have to say, y'all, this is pretty cool. Um, it is, what? nine o'clock on the east coast and uh and over a hundred of you have <laughs> decided to plug in and uh live stream with me uh right now uh, maybe this will have to be a tradition while i'm out here in the desert i don't know it's effing cold but uh it's pretty beautiful right now um it's good to see y'all okay
Hurts, hurts the fingers. This is the only problem, really, with playing when it's cold. Uh, it's, uh, it hurts the fingers. You know, like, these little guys need to have some dexterity. Um, and that's the first thing to go uh, when it's cold. So, if you don't mind, I'm just going to take a minute or two in between each song this morning to try and get some feeling back in the old digits. Um, you are actually um, looking at a little bit of my handiwork, um, my landscaping handiwork, um, in front of the beautiful sunrise that's happening right there. Um, so we are in a place called Gamma Gulch, and uh, and in here there's a guy, uh, now a buddy of mine. Um, uh, his name is Martin, and uh, and uh, he helps a lot of folks out um, with their various gardens and stuff like that. Um, I am not. Uh, I wanted our property, our landscape here to be as natural as possible, but it is incredible. I actually talked to a local botanist here, um, and you know, there are a lot of things that you can do to steward your land. Um, there is, and man, you know, what I'll have to do at some point is, is uh, maybe at one of these gatherings, I'll go out and do, we'll do some before and afters, but that tree right here, this tree, So that tree is called a cat's claw. It's a, it's essentially a thorn bush. Now, if you saw that thorn bush before I got my paws on it, that's what it would look like. It would look like a big snarl about, oh, I don't know, 11 feet high. Um, just a snarl of brambles and, uh, and, uh, but the tree, the cat's claw itself, and let me see if I can zoom in. I can't remember if I can do this or not. No, Facebook don't let me do that. Um, the tree itself is like, that is, 
incredibly old. It is an ancient being, that tree. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's probably over a thousand years old, if you can believe it, that cat's claw right there. And as you can see, it is underneath all the brambles when you get them away. Uh, it is like this beautiful, right, 11 foot tall bonsai. And the cool thing is, and, and actually, I, and I did ask this botanist about this, right, cat's claws, as well as some other plants here in the desert, um, when you prune them, when you cut away and strip away a lot of the dead, nasty stuff, it actually, it makes the plants happier. <laughs> it makes the plants grow better. It makes them healthier. It makes them, uh, 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 uh just it can make your your if you do that throughout your property through all your cat's claws it makes them less susceptible to disease um, um, it can change the way your landscape looks and feels um, pretty cool um, so anyways Martin calls me up uh, one day and he says he says Adam look I'm working with somebody and they want to get rid of all of their choya. Now, choya is uh, is uh, is a kind of cactus. Uh, you can see um, you can see these are three choya that I planted right here. These guys. Now, choya in many ways I think are like the most beautiful. Uh, cactuses, both Alan and I feel that way. Um, uh, they are gorgeous, but uh, they are super, super spiky and super, super painful. And they're always shedding little spikes and uh, they, a lot of people don't like them because of that. Um, so literally, Martin came by with a truckload of Choya, uh, little Choya rescues that this person just scraped their land, took out all the cactuses. And so uh, I took as many of them as I could and planted them all around. Now, those three, I don't know if you can look closely and I don't want to change the camera angle because this is a really good spot. But those three, um, I'd say with the choya, it's really delicate, right? Because you're planting stuff in sand. And so, uh, uh, it's hard, it, it's hard to get them to live. And so um, I have, for the most part, only taken rescues on as far as my plantings around here. Uh, that one, uh, it looks like two out of the three are dying right now. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I think my success rate for the Choya is probably, uh, it's probably about, probably about 50 or 60 percent which I think is really really good um I, I planted about 50 of them or 60 of them around around the property and so uh a lot of them survived I saved a lot um the other day actually you can probably you probably can't see uh I'll show you but the other day there was another neighbor who literally these beautiful desert trees yuccas they look like the Joshua trees out here, uh, but they're smaller. Uh, they had literally bulldozed about, I don't know, 25 yuccas off of their land. And it was so sad. And they were all just sitting in ditches. And so I borrowed <laughs> a neighbor's trailer. And I showed up like in the middle of the night and uh, with with gloves and I stole all of the bulldozed <laughs> yuccas. I guess you can't call it stole because they were just gonna, I don't know, they were gonna take them away to the dump or something like that. But uh, I certainly didn't fucking ask permission, let's put it that way. And uh, and I planted them all. Yuccas are a lot harder though. My success rate with the yuccas are probably, I don't know, 20% survival rate. They also had a very difficult uh, uprooting, right? Like a bulldozer just bulldozed them out. So the fact that any of them are living, I think, is probably a positive.
But I have a lot of dead planted yuccas in my <laughs> in my little patch of desert there. Uh, all right, let's sing a song. Oh, look at that. That's my thumb pick right there. Just did that. <sighs> These are first world problems. It's late. It's happening, it's happening. <laughs> um, I wish. Yeah. I wish you could. If I really get out of the picture, it focuses better. It seems to be confused, the camera, that is. It seems to be confused, and it's thinking that I should be the focus of the film. Uh, so when I go into screen, unfortunately, it focuses on my face and you don't get that beautiful sunrise. 
Um, I'm gonna let my hands warm up for a second. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna take a second, all right? Well, you all, I am, I am 30 yards from the cabin where there is more coffee waiting for me. I am gonna pour some more and I'm gonna come back, okay? Don't go nowhere, please. Okay, I'll be right back. Whew. If I'm like kind of a third in frame, it doesn't think that I should be the focus and it stays on that sunrise. Maybe that's the magic right here. I mean, you only need to see the side of my face anyways to get the gist of what's going on. God knows some of you regular gatherers have to look at my face enough. <laughs> uh, oh, that's good. The problem with coffee is that in order to drink it, you have to keep one of your hands out of your pocket. Um, okay, so while I continue to warm up for a second, um, let's talk about this coming week, because I've been thinking about it. Um, so we're going to gather in two days on Tuesday, like we always do. Um, maybe during that gathering, I'll give you uh, a little uh, botany tour around the desert since I've been talking about it so damn much. Uh, I could introduce you to all the different species of plants that are, uh, that are around. Oh, did you see that? The colors just got muted. Like, just like that. Right? It's a beautiful pink right now, though. Which probably means that sun's gonna pop any second. Um, it's getting bright, but it is cloudy, so maybe we won't see the maybe the maybe we won't see the actual sun come up. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so um, Tuesday, like I was saying, maybe I could show you a before and an after of one of the cat's claws um uh maybe i'll take you over to uh, a site where i've been working on the recent most recent cat's claw um but they're nasty i mean it's a sacrifice if you want to if you want to prune a cat's claw i don't know if you can my arms well it's not worth showing you but my my arms have all these little cat's claw bites, claw marks, uh, all up and down them right now. By the time I get to the boat, you, uh, you stowaways, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to see the state of my, my beat up body. But it is, uh, it is so rewarding and fulfilling to do, to do this, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we'll be able to. It's so complicated, right? With as as Allie and I having kids, and and uh, and life is expensive <laughs> and stressful, and uh, and having this place out here is expensive and stressful right now. It's so fulfilling, but uh, well, I hope we can keep it. I hope we can keep it forever. 
Uh, it is an amazing feeling to just feel like I have land that I can work with. Uh, um, it's a really nice feeling. Yeah, this was a uh, this was a, um, a parcel of land, uh, a five acre parcel of land. It was it was given out they were given these parcels of land as, as part of the homestead act um, and the homestead act in the u.s it was a, a program that actually was around until the 70s believe it or not but in the 50s uh homestead act there were not enough people out in the desert the, the government was giving away five acre plots of land out here if you can believe it it's true to encourage people to come out here and uh if you were given a five acre plot of land you had to uh you had to prove up you had to uh you had to uh, build a i think it's like a 300 square foot structure on that land uh, uh, many people built little structures on their plots of land and then abandoned them out here uh, an artist built found got this little this little parcel and built built our little cabin and uh and it's been standing ever since uh it feels like a really cool part of history that 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 we get to be a part of um <laughs> uh so this week we were going to talk about this week so there's tuesday uh during which i may or may not give you a tour of uh some of the land around here. I'd like to do that. Uh, that would be really fun for me. So uh, maybe we'll do a little of that in the midst of music. Um, uh, I do not know. The problem is I may lose you as we're walking around this property because because uh, uh, reception is a little dicey out here. But uh, but we can try. What do we gotta lose? Now we have a major problem later on this week we have a major major problem in that uh we uh we are uh, and by we i mean me and my bandies and our stowaways uh are going to be uh on a boat uh on which we are not uh able to live stream that's a challenge because as you know gatherers uh our our contract with one another is that we uh that we gather uh we gather uh every tuesday night at 7 p.m eastern and we gather once a weekend somewhere the entire weekend though we're gonna be on a boat almost almost the entire weekend I believe we are playing the Funky Biscuit in Boca Raton on Thursday night. And then Friday morning, we load the boat and we ain't back until Tuesday. Uh, when we get back on Tuesday, uh, we are gonna rocket, start rocketing back to Boston. We are bombing back to Boston in the van, uh, which will be waiting for us. Karina and her brother are driving it down as we speak, I believe. And, uh, so, uh, 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 we're going to bomb it back to Boston where I'm going to fly back to, uh, the desert. So we'll find a spot from the road that Tuesday as we're bombing. Uh, but, uh, we got to figure out a way to gather next weekend. Um, so there are two options in my mind. Uh, number one is... Uh, we could live stream at the Funky Biscuit on Thursday, but it breaks our rules a little bit because a Thursday is not the weekend. Uh, but it would be really fun because all the bandies would be there. The other thing we could do is find a window in the morning before we load the boat. We could, we could literally, if we have reception, we could be live streaming on the docks uh, uh, before we get on to... Uh, before we get onto the boat. That could be really cool too. So um gonna figure that out. Um, but we'll keep you posted. Okay. Oh, I need to tell you that I am 
right? So, you know, it's one thing, right? It's one thing to fill up a club when we are playing, uh, when we're playing in the Northeast in New England, where we have a ton of fans and, uh, and we've been playing a million shows. Florida isn't, is, is kind of uncharted territory. I mean, we've been there a handful of times, but nothing compared to what we've done in the Northeast. And we booked this show at the Funky Biscuit in Boca Raton uh, just a handful of weeks ago. It is, there are like no seats left. There is some standing room availability, but the place is filled up with, with concert goers that bought tickets to see little old us all the way down in Florida. Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. Uh, I'm sorry. I should be used to a certain level of this at this point in my career, but sadly, maybe I am not. I am very, very super happy that it's going to be a filled up night. Um, I want to thank our amazing community uh, uh, at uh, at Rally Sound because we're going to be doing a little good that night while uh, while we hang and share music. Uh, we are doing a clothing drive, but not the kind of clothing drive that we have done in the past. There is a local foundation supporting uh, supporting folks that are battling breast cancer. And the foundation's mission is to uh, is to just is to just help breast cancer patients in any way they can uh, to give them hope. And uh, and so uh, uh, this this foundation owns a thrift store. A local thrift store and so uh, for those of you coming to the Boca show uh, we are taking clothing donations for the thrift store they will then sell those clothes and all the proceeds will go to the breast cancer foundation and of course of course of course you can uh, you can donate uh, uh, directly to the org itself through rally sound if you would like that night. For those of you online that would like to contribute in one way or another, um, I'm not sure about this, but I think we should have information about the uh, about the organization and about our uh, our little mission uh, on our tour page for the Funky Biscuit for this Thursday. Um, uh, if we don't, I'll uh, I'll try to make sure that we get it up. Uh, and, uh, and we will, uh, um, and you can, you can, you can contribute online if you'd like. Okay. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play a song. Not many songs being played. Whew! This morning, I'm sorry.
Driving slow till I pair to the hopes I know. School boards fighting main streets and mess, but there's still out strong in the Sunday best. Time's all rattled, world's on fire. Let's get dirty, let's kick the tires. We got something we can't find in the news. Ain't gonna change your own mind. Now, if you got I know. I'll shut. I'll shut up. Y'all are not y'all. I keep, you know. I know. I make this mistake a lot. Okay. I just. I assume the majority of y'all are in. Uh, are in the Northeast, and for the most part, that's probably true. Um, but, uh, but, um, uh, there are. We have gatherers all over the world. And maybe this early morning is making it possible for some of those gatherers to tune in at a normal time. Oh, thank you for the claps and the love. You know, uh, right? Like, I mean, we have gatherers in Germany that uh, that have to watch at like, right? At like one, at one in the morning uh, when we uh, go live at 7 p.m. Eastern or something like that, midnight. Can't remember the time difference. Uh, this is actually kind of a reasonable time for them. Um, so, anyways. <laughs> uh, that was a song, uh, That's My Town, that, uh, that I wrote with Stephen Kellogg. Super fun. Uh, uh, we should play that more often. The band should learn that song. I don't think the band's ever tried to play that song. Um, but that would be really cool. Uh, this cruise, uh, that we are on, uh, this, uh, this coming weekend, um, uh, train hosts the cruise, the band train, but Stephen Kellogg, I believe I looked at past lineups for the cruise. Stephen Kellogg has, uh, has, has played on this cruise before. Pretty cool. Um, uh, so, um. By the way, these are all uh, these are all your leftovers from uh, from the last gathering that we had here in uh, in the desert. So uh, nice work, nice choice, great way to work out. Anyways, like I was saying, I shouldn't complain. Uh, it's a lot colder where most of y'all are than it is here. I mean. Maybe not that. I mean, I don't know. Thirty-six degrees is cold, and it's cold in the Northeast too. It's cold everywhere. Uh, 
it's a little more bitter in the northeast because you've got all the moisture in the air here in the desert there's not as much moisture so uh it doesn't it's not as stingy the cold is not as stingy as it is uh as it is out there uh it still it still hurts the digits though Stain lit. I should have known better. About 27 down on 29. A juniper rides. A coyote smile. I thrust on the sunrise. Old leather on fire. I fell in. Um, okay, a couple tour announcements, um, for y'all, uh, we're gonna send out a little email update later 
on this week. Uh, but I'm going to give you just some of the gist of it all. Um, February 23rd. Tickets are going to go on sale for the autumn getaway sessions. Now changed to the getaway sessions. Um, uh, you should write this down. All right, tickets are going to go on sale February 23rd, and the getaway sessions are going to be September 17th through the 19th in Sydney, Maine at Snow Pond Center for the Arts. Uh, awesome, beautiful, like summer campy vibe kind of a place. It's like a summer camp on steroids though because they got an amazing staff uh, to cook our meals for us. Um, they've got an awesome sound system and a spot for our concerts. They have, uh, they have, they have, not only do they have a whole ton of dorm rooms that uh, we can stay in, but they have a whole bunch of private cabins uh, on a lake. Some of the cabins uh, uh, just have one bedroom in them, so a couple or a single person uh, can stay there or a couple buddies could stay there. Uh, but they also have a whole bunch of cabins that have uh, two rooms in them. So, uh, so if somebody wants to double date in a cabin, uh, um, they can do that too. Um, I am telling you this now because uh, I am not afraid that uh, Snow Pond will sell out. It is a large place. It can hold more people than our winter gathering uh, uh, can hold in Lake Maury. Lake Maury, we're pretty maxed out at about 200 people. Uh, uh, we have basically, we sell out that, that resort uh, each year. I mean, we come close to it at least, right? But uh, um, Snow Pond can, can house more folks, but there are a limited number of cabins. Um, so, uh, so you got to make sure, uh, uh, for you, uh, getaways, you got to make sure that you get on there quick and you reserve the spot that you want for sleeping. Um, and, uh, and I haven't talked to my team about it, but of course, for those of you who have been on the trip before, uh, you will, uh, you will get a little, you will get a little bit of a head start in terms of being able to book and sign up and, uh, and, and reserve your spot. So, uh, I cannot wait, uh, for, uh, the getaway, uh, this fall. It is going to be awesome. Uh, uh, it's, we moved it to September and I hope that's not too inconvenient for the y'all, but I just think the weather's, it's still going to be summer weather up there and the lake's going to be awesome for swimming and, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. So, um, um, February 23rd is when, uh, tickets officially go on sale. Um, uh, we are going to be inviting you all to, uh, to reapply, uh, to host some live gatherings this summer. We are not going to be focusing on live gatherings like we have in the past, but you never know uh, when there are openings in the schedule. We, we think that the live gatherings are so special, have been so special. They have been such an inspiring last chapter in, uh, in, in, in our journey that we want to keep them going. And so uh, uh, we, want to, uh, we want to make sure that for those of you that want to host an Adam Ezra concert in your backyard, that you at least apply and uh, so that we have your names. And if, uh, if, we can, if we can squeeze in extra shows, we will. We will, um, for sure. Um, which also just, I'm gonna just put a little footnote in there. Uh, I believe that 2024, we are gonna start up the Get Folks House Concert Tour again so later on in the year we will be uh we will be uh opening up applications for uh for for house concerts uh again i am i have missed playing house concert tour with you all um so uh i just happened to look down and someone was asking falcon ridge or black bear this year 
uh, we will be playing the Black Bear Festival this spring. Uh, we do not know right now if Falcon Ridge Folk Festival is actually happening. Um, we certainly hope so, and if we can, we'll play there. But uh, 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 and uh, and also, of course, we are. Uh, I am scheduled to have a phone date with Joe and Mickey, our hosts for Goshenstock, which is in the same town uh, uh, this summer. So hopefully that'll work out as well too. Um, Starting in March, we have a bunch of shows back in the Northeast that you all uh, should really uh, come to. I think you should come to all of them. Um, starting in Asbury Park at the Wonder Bar. Can't wait for that. We're going up to Utica, Fairport, New York, Syracuse. Uh, we've got an awesome run. The Syracuse show already sold out. They're thinking about potentially adding another Syracuse show. Um, we're going to be playing in Massachusetts, in Maine, um, uh, Burlington, Vermont, we're coming back to, New Hampshire, we're coming back to, all in just March and April. Uh, uh, we've got a lot of, a uh, lot of plans of brewing, so, um, so, so get tickets now, places are starting to f fill up, I'm just, I'm just warning you. Some places you don't have to worry about, but there are places that are uh that are filling up and you can always call ahead if there are not uh seat maps letting you know how full a place is um uh because there are shows that you don't you don't have to you don't have to jump on way ahead of time um okay one more this morning and then i'm gonna go in and i am going to wake my daughter oh Thank you for joining me this morning. Remember, uh, this Thursday at Boca, bring some clothing. We're gonna be doing a little good, helping one of the local uh, organizations is supporting people that are fighting breast cancer right now. And I wanna thank our friend Scott Wexler for organizing uh, that effort on behalf of Rally Sound. Um, it's gonna be a fun week coming up. I'm excited to have you with me. Raise up your glass. Let us drink to the wounded our backs. May it always flow steady.
Here's to the Cheers, gatherers. It's been nice spending the morning with you. Please stay safe. Keep on looking out for one another. And I'll see you soon.